Today we're going to start by looking at a very simple and very familiar problem, and then we are going to do a different problem of the same type. Then it's going to suddenly turn into calculus for no apparent reason, and then, and that's going to be the really interesting part, we are going to make a three-dimensional version of the same problem, which hopefully will justify the use of calculus. If I were to ask you, for example, for the area of this sector, then there is not much to do. That is just the area of the circle divided by four, because that sector is one quarter of the circle. If I asked you for the area of a different sector, then you would have to know the angle of the sector right here. And then there is a formula for that area. And it's very common for this type of exercise to ask you not just for the area of the sector, but to make a different shape using the pieces of the picture. Like, for example, this green area here. How would you calculate this area? And the typical approach to that is to say that the green area is the blue sector minus a triangle that is this triangle here. And we also have a formula for finding the area of a triangle. So we're going to be using these two formulas today as well. Uh, we simplify a problem if we just say that the radius of the circle is 1, so that you don't have this part here or these parts, so that the green area in the picture is just theta minus sine theta over 2. I want to still keep the 90 degree angle that I had here in my original quarter circle area that I asked you, but I want to put it someplace else. I want to put that 90 degree right here and ask to calculate the area of this shape here. I'm not going to put this point here in a completely generic place in the circle, I still want it to be in this diagonal here, so this is pi over 4. But I don't want to say by exactly how much I'm moving it out of the center, so I'm going to call that a letter K. You're supposed to calculate the red area. It is not going to come out in terms of the radius of the circle because I'm already saying the radius is 1, but it is going to come out in terms of the parameter k, which is how much to the right and up I have moved to put the corner of my shape. So yeah, that is not a sector of a circle, but the idea for the solution is still to like break the shape into other smaller pieces that we know how to calculate. So we would be able to calculate the area of this blue sector if only we knew what angle this is. This green triangle here, which will at that point be easy to calculate because we will already have the angle theta. And then by subtracting green from blue, we will have found this part here. And then in order to finish the problem, we're just going to add up this right triangle here. We're going to have to calculate this distance here. I'm going to give it a name. If you look at this part of the picture, you're going to find a right triangle that has a hypotenuse of 1, and you see that the vertical leg here, its measure is k, because it's the same as that on the other side. And that makes it easy to find this angle here. Let's call it alpha for now. And you can see in the right triangle that the sine of alpha is k over 1, because now we have another alpha over there, and theta is in the middle, so theta is this right angle minus the two alphas. Now I can put that into both formulas to find the blue sector and the green triangle. So first of all, sine of pi over 2 minus an angle is the cosine of the angle. I'm just going to use the double angle formula to get that 2 out of there. And then a couple of interesting things happen here. First of all, the sine of the arc sine of k is just k, and then that's squared so I have a k squared here. But the cosine of the arc sine of k is also an interesting thing. But by Pythagoras, we know that this other leg needs to be 1 minus k squared. And the angle alpha that we're talking about is this one. So the sine of alpha is k over 1, which is why alpha is the arc sine of k. But the cosine of alpha, which is the thing that we are squaring here right now, the cosine of alpha is this square root divided by 1. So when we take this cosine and then square it, it just doesn't have the square root anymore. 
So this is the area of the green triangle. It is a lot simpler expression than this one that we originally got. And remember that we also already have the area of the blue sector in the picture. So now the only thing that we need is the red triangle, the square root of 1 minus k squared. That segment is also k plus b. So we just subtract k on both sides to get the value of b. And now to get the area of the triangle, since it is a right triangle, uh, I'm just going to do base times height divided by 2. That is b squared over 2. So that's the third piece that we needed to put together the solution to our problem. Uh, remember, the strategy was blue minus green plus red. So here it is. This is blue minus green plus red. And these halves cancel out. That is the whole answer to the area problem. So here is that circle again with the point KK. Let's keep it with the radius 1 so that the circle that we are talking about is the circle with equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. And if we want to treat that as a function, we just have to solve for y and it will be the square root of 1 minus x squared. So what I want to do now to calculate this area is to solve an integral between this function and this horizontal line here. I'm going to need the coordinates of this point, but I already know that. That is something that I've calculated before. So the integral is going to be from k to the square root of this function minus this function. Now it's a calculus problem, so let's go ahead and solve this integral. Okay, so the second half is quite easy. The integral of k dx is just k times x. And when you put the limits of integration, that's what you get. So this is the thing that we're going to have to subtract in the end. But the actual work is going to be to solve this integral. And this looks like trigonometric substitution, cosine t dt for the dx. Now this part is looking good because that is just cosine. But then this is annoying, isn't it? Because there is another cosine here. So it's cosine times cosine, which makes it a cosine squared. Now let's substitute back with our x equals sine of t. So our integral is going to be x times, well, cosine of x is going to be the square root of 1 minus x squared, right? We've used this substitution before in this problem plus t, t is the arc sine of x. That's the solution to this integral, but now we need to go back and put in the limits of integration. So when we do that, we have 1 minus x squared here, but x squared is just 1 minus k squared. So these ones are going to cancel out. And the arc sine of x, is going to bring me back to this triangle that we've looked at before because the arc sine of that square root is not alpha. Alpha is the arc sine of k. Uh, but the angle in this triangle that has the square root as a sine is this angle here. This angle is the arc sine of the square root. But this angle, if you look at the sum of the angles, is just pi over 2 minus alpha. So that's pi over 2 minus the arc sine of k, to put it in terms of the same letters that I was using before. So that arc sine has been substituted by this here. This k was just a simplification of this, right? The square root of k squared. Right, so that was one of the limits of integration of the thing that we are doing. Now we need to substitute also x equals k to get the other limit. Uh, this one's a little bit easier. It's just writing the same thing again, but with k instead of x. But to finish solving the area problem, we need to do this one minus this one, which is the fundamental theorem of calculus. And then we can't forget to also subtract this other term that we calculated in the beginning. This is the whole thing. This is the area of the shape in the picture. But we can simplify this expression quite a lot. And that is the final answer to the problem. I want to make it three-dimensional. I want to calculate the volume, 
not of a sphere, but of a strangely cut piece of a sphere. The first thing that I had done with a circle originally was to just cut it in four pieces and tell you pi r squared divided by four. But so you have one, two, three, four pieces on top and another four pieces on the bottom. It is currently split into the eight parts with a red pen, but I don't want to cut it like this. I want to take the corner of the piece that I want to cut slightly off center. And I'm going to do that by not using this big circle here that passes through the center of the sphere, but by drawing a different circle a little bit above. I want to shift that by the same amount in all directions. So now instead of using this circle here, I want to also shift it a little bit this way. And now let's do the same to the third circle. Like that, so now let's cut it. Pictures in three dimensions tend to be very difficult to draw, but I tried. So here is my picture. We are going to consider the sphere has a radius of one all the way through, but this time I'm calling it big R because the little r is going to be radius of smaller circles throughout the problem. Like for example, this orange circle that you see here on the sphere. The red point in the picture is the corner of the slice, and so all three coordinates are K because it has been moved from the center by the same amount in all three directions. The three green points, both of those coordinates are also K because that point is directly vertically on top of the other corner. So only one of the coordinates is changing, which in this case it's the Z coordinate. And to find out the value of the third coordinate, we're going to start from the equation of this sphere, which is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1, due to the radius being 1. And now I want to isolate z in terms of the other variables. Looks very similar to the equation of a circle that we had before. And now for the green point on the top corner, x and y are both value k, so that is the value of the third coordinate of that point. And the other two points are going to have the same value, but in the other coordinates, x and y. Now I want to calculate that volume. And the first strategy that I used in the two-dimensional problem is not really going to be a viable strategy here, because the analogy would be to start by drawing this set of blue segments, and then trying to do blue this minus green that and all of that stuff. But that doesn't work. I don't have a formula for that kind of blue shape that includes all of this and going all the way up to the sphere. That would be analogous to what the circular sector was doing in the two-dimensional problem. But I don't have that here, which is why when I was doing the two-dimensional problem, I insisted on also showing you the calculus technique because that applies, that we can bring here. So the technique that we're going to use here is very similar to solids of revolution we are going to be stacking up thin pieces of volume here. The only difference is that for solids of revolution, these areas that you're stacking are always circles. But that's what I wanted to point out. It doesn't have to be circles. You can stack whatever you want. I'm assuming you've already seen solids of revolution. So I am just uh, making this small modification to it, that instead of having uh, pi r squared and then integrating dy, I am going to have the area that we've already calculated, dz, and then integrating. So now let's start putting together our integral. It is going to be an integral in z. The smaller value of z that we're going to be using is k. But the biggest value of z that we're going to use is at the corner of the shape here, is where the shape ends. So it is this value. And the function that we're going to be integrating for each one of these values of z here, like this one, for example, is 
the area of the sector of the shape that we find at this height. And then the DZ is going to be the thing that is giving the thickness of the slices. But lucky for us, this area here is something that we have already calculated before because it is part of another circle here. And if we change the point of view of this picture, uh, we try to draw that blue circle seen from the top, the shape whose area we're going to be using is something like this, which is exactly what we were calculating before. But we do have to pay attention to what the radius of this circle is, because the blue circle does not have radius 1. The big sphere has radius 1. The higher up you go in the sphere, the smaller the radius of the circle. So that is something that depends on the variable z. This is the little r that we are looking for. This is z. This is a right angle. And this here is the radius of the big sphere, which is 1. So to get r in terms of z, all that you need is Pythagoras. Okay, so what function do I want to put in this integral here? It has to be the area of this thing depending on z. And even though I didn't show you every detail of how I generalized that to include the different radius of the circle, just bear with me for a moment here because this was the expression we got at that time and now I want to substitute this r in terms of z into there because this integral is dz. So when we look at this monstrosity, the correct reaction is to be scared of it, although some terms are clearly easy to integrate. Uh, this is a polynomial term in z, so is this one. This one looks like the kind of thing that requires trigonometric substitution. The really scary integral here is this one. So at this point, I honestly wasn't sure if these two integrals were of the kind that you can actually find a primitive. I think that this is the type of moment when it is appropriate to ask technology to do it for you, just to make sure that you're not trying to do something that is actually impossible. Apparently, yes. You don't see anything in here that is not an elementary function. So that was incredibly satisfying. It worked way better than I thought it would. I honestly wasn't expecting it to have a closed answer in terms of elementary functions. I do want to show you another possible strategy for this problem. I'm actually not going to show you that right now. This was part of a larger video. What I showed you today was a summary, a shortened version. And this double integral thing was one of the things that were included in that original longer video, as well as a lot more detail and comments along the way of all of the calculations that you have seen today. So if you're interested in looking at the original video, it is still available. The link is in the description.